Hello, it's the IT guys here, and today we're going to be looking at graphs and charts in a graphs calc. So we're going to make this spreadsheet available to download in the description if you want to have a go at yourself. But we're going to be looking at these graphs today. So in this episode, we're going to be looking at how you create each of these types of graphs we've got along here. We've got all scatters and net graphs. And in the next episode, we're going to be looking at how you make them look nice and pretty. So let's start with this line graph. If you can see, we've got two lines on this one. We've got our rainfall line, which is this blue one. We've got a temperature line, which is this red one. We can, we've also got two different axes, depending on which one you want to switch. So, let's show you how we create this. Let's scroll down a bit. Okay. We're going to first go to this little button here, which says chart, or you can go insert chart. Okay. Once you've got this, you'll get this chart wizard pop up. So to start with, we're going to be creating this line graph. So you're going to go down to line on the options. Next, we want it to show, if you look at this one, lines without points. So that's our choice. You can have a 3D one. You can have the point shown as well. Or you could have it like a scatter graph that just shows the different points on the line. That's the next one. I've also got this one, smooth lines, because we don't want all the spikes. Each month we wanted to smooth to show like a trend. So we're going to have smooth lines. Then we're going to click next. Next off, we've got to go to this little button here which says select data range. But then we're going to select our table of data. At the moment, you can see in our chart wizard that it looks a bit weird and messed up. That's because it's looking for the data in columns and it's looking at all of these. And we actually need it in rows. So if we've set that, now we've got rainfall and temperature being shown in our graph. We've also got the first row as a label, which is January to December. We've got the first column as a label, which is rainfall and temperature, which you can see in our legend here. We're now going to click next. This is changing what is in the legend. This should be fine already. So we're going to click next. This is where we add a title. So it's going to be, say, rainfall and temperature. Something like that. You can choose your own titles. And it'll now display it at the top. I don't want a subtitle. You can choose an extra one to go underneath if you want. Right, the x axis, this is the one that goes across. So this is the month of the year. Yep, and the y-axis, this is the primary y-axis at the moment. I'm going to make this one the rainfall, okay? I'll show you what we're going to do now in a minute for the temperature. We're going to put in the second y-axis. So, temperature, that's, yeah, there we go. And now I'm going to click finish, yeah. So this is what our graph looks like so far. Sorry, I'm moving that around, I didn't mean to. There we go, drag it over. And if you can see, they look. They, if you can see, the rainfall looks very similar to this graph here. Well, it actually is the same. However, our temperature looks very flat and squished in the bottom. It's hard to see the patterns. So, what we're going to do is we're going to insert a secondary y-axis here to display the temperature on a different scale to the rainfall. This is the sort of thing you'd see quite often in a temperature and rainfall graph. So the first thing, as you can see I've done here, is to select the orange line. It'll get come up with all these little green boxes. Then you right click on here and then you set format data series at the top. Now we're going to say align data series to secondary y axis. Okay? And then just click OK. And now You've now got it assigned to a secondary y-axis here, which is going 0 to 25 degrees rather than 0 to 350. The last thing we want to do is assign this one to... Ooh, that's a mistake. That one's meant to say rainfall, and this one's meant to say temperature. So I'll edit that now. Change that one to rainfall. Edit them, you just double-click them. And it'll come up with a little editing box for you. So, what I'm going to do now is 
then we're going to go insert totals secondary y axis so it's in the secondary axis y axis and this one is showing the temperature so you're going to insert temperature there and click ok so now what you can see is we've now got this graph which is a line graph showing temperature and rainfall on different axes so this is that's been how you use it a line graph the next one we're going to be looking at is this pie chart so this one is a bit simpler we don't have to worry about adding a second axis and that sort of thing so what we're going to do is click the chart again this time we're going to go down to pie chart you can then choose between these different styles i might want to explode it i've done a normal pie chart earlier but i might have an explode chart this time I click next again our data is in rows and i have got to go select it it's this little table up here the first row is also a label and the first column is also a label and as you can see it's now created this pie chart for us click next that should be fine the title of it should be department sales This is what we're looking at on this graph. We don't have an X, Y, and Z axis on this pie chart, so you don't need to worry about them. And we're going to click finish. We're also going to leave the legend left on the right. Of this. So this is our exploded pie chart. You don't have to have an exploded version. It's up to you. It looks slightly different to take the normal pie chart, but they're showing exactly the same data. It's just this segment is slightly smaller and squished and split up. Next episode, we'll be showing you how to move segments to make them into the right position for you. So, next up, we've got a bar graph. This one is another one of the commonly used graphs you get in Calc. So, again, you click chart to start with. Then you go up to bar or column. I left this column, they're exactly the same. Uh, we don't need a 3D look, but if you wanted to insert one, you can choose between cylindrical, cone, or pyramid. I'm not going to have a 3D really look for this one. And now I'm going to click next. And again, we've got all our data in rows, so make sure you check that out, otherwise, you'll get a weird looking graph. And we're going to highlight our data. Again, the first row is a label, and the first column is a label. Now we've got revenue for these, and then there's our income. I don't need legend for this graph, so I'll turn it off in a second. But this is fine for us. So I'm going to Turn off the legend, turn the call the title revenue or department revenue, something like that. This is exactly the same sort of thing as we showed in the previous pie chart. It's exactly the same data, just shown in a different way. This is where it's important that you decide on the right graph to show your data. So then X axis then is department. And then the y axis is their revenue. So we've now got departments, we've got the title, and we've got the labels. So now we're going to click finish. And that is our graph inserted this time. If you look at them, they are exactly the same. So that's how we insert our department revenue graphs for bar graphs or charts. So, next off, we're going to combine a bar graph with a line graph. So, we might recognize this data from earlier. It's our rainfall and temperature data. So, what we're going to look at is how we can have a bar graph and a line graph on the same chart, as you see. This one has also got different axes. So, what we do first is we're going to go back to the chart again. You should be getting used to that by now. There's an option down here for column and line. Then the next thing you need to do is make sure you change this to show that we're going to have one line and the columns. Then we're going to click next. So we're going to have our data series in rows. And we're going to go up here and select all of this. First row is a label, first column is a label. And as you can see, we've got our rainfall and temperature being put into bars and lines. And we're going to click next. Then we can click next again. And then set the titles, so rainfall and temperature, or I'll type, sorry. Uh, 
and then the x axis is the month and the y axis is going to be our rainfall data because we're going to change it to show our second axis for our temperature and click finish next we're going to have to assign this line for temperature to a secondary y axis like we did earlier so you right click it format data series secondary y axis and click ok and now we're getting our secondary y axis so all that's left for us to do is insert titles Along on the secondary y axis, call it temperature. Temp uh, yeah. There we go. Click OK. So now we've got month, rainfall, and temperature. And if we drag this graph across quickly, okay, there we go. We've now got the same graphs again. I don't think this one looks slightly like better because I've got both the lines. But we should you have to change that for the next steps. So the next one we're going to have to look at is this bubble graph. There's not too many left now. Three. So what we're going to do, do sorry, is click chart, bubble. Next. Works, there we go. Data series in rows. Select our table. And if you look at this data, you'll notice that it's got three different options. So what we're showing is the number of sales along the bottom, the cost per unit at the top, or at the white axis, sorry, and then the size of the bubble is proportional to the profit we make. So there's not actually a scale showing you the profit we make. It's just it's how proportional it is to the size of the bubble. So then we're going to click next, next again. I get this back in the screen. There we go. So then the title can be sales uh, and cost or something like that. And then this one is the number of sales. And the y axis is going to be the cost. I think, yeah, the cost. Then we're going to click finish. And this is what we get. If you notice, if you're trying to read off the costs and stuff for all these bubbles, you have to go to the midpoint of the bubble, which is where you'll see these blue dots. That's because if you don't, then you're going to be getting a wide range, and the actual value which we've got in our table is the midpoint. So we're going to move on from this, and we're going to click onto the scatter graph. The scatter graph, we've got a small section of that previous uh, data that we had a second ago and we're going to be putting that into our different sort of graph we're going to have this category and I don't really want to put the lines between them otherwise it looks virtually the same as the line graph so then we're going to go we're not going to have any lines or sorting and we're going to just go here like we have for all of our graphs just arrange the data in rows with the first row as a label and the first column as a label that's pretty much it. Let me just skip forward to, put in our title, so something like profit. Our x axis will be something like, uh, I don't know, what is it? It's our cost, and the y axis is our profit. And then we're going to click finish. And there is our scatter graph. There we go, let's move it over a little bit more. There. So, as I said before, next time we're going to be showing you how to put different grid lines on, change the colours, and that sort of thing. But for now, that's what we're doing, just inserting the graphs. So, now finally, we've got this different sort of table, where we've got comparing children, businessmen, and retired in these three different colours. And we've got our four different options for their mode of transport, or something like that. We've got a sample of 20 people, so they're all made with the same numbers. That's generally quite cool when doing net graphs as well. So let's start by inserting our net graph. So net, I'm going to have the one with lines, but I'm not going to put it in the points. Then I'm going to go next. Then I'm going to select our table, like this. And let it pick up that data. As you can see, 
it's already doing it in columns because our children, our business went and retired are in columns like this and our four options are being taken it as rows like as I could be walking or something so next we're going to then just click next we don't need to worry about any more of that we've got our three here in our data series we click next I'm just going to give you a title, so mode of transport, something like that. Come on, one. And then we don't really need to worry about our x axis or y axis, they're both frequency. But I'm not going to put anything in for them because it'll look quite weird in this graph and hard to read. So I'm going to just click finish. And that is our final graph inserted for this episode. Leave a like or comment, make sure you subscribe, and We'll see you next time. Also, don't forget to download this spreadsheet in the description of the video.